Now the cool thing about this Mac pull block, it actually has the uh, the top half for the upper build. I've seen a lot of people where they try to they just use this keep the lower on there, then they'll snap the upper receiver onto the lower and start torquing down the barrel nut mm -hmm. with it. It's putting a ton of pressure on your takedown and pivot pins and it can just tweak that, you know, upper lower relationship you have. So you never want to do that. Just grab something like this or they have blocks where you can um, clamp the upper into it and clamp it in the vise. So either either way it works. I like yeah, kind of that clamshell design that wraps around the upper. You put it right in the vise itself. Exactly. But gotcha. That one actually. So that's all the more reason why you want to come and do a build. Something like uh, that. At a place like this where, you know, they've got all the tools. You can do it right. And, uh, Neil, do you guys charge anything to have guys come in and build them? I mean, if they're building them, if they're buying no, the gun here. I mean, typically, we tell people, hey, if you buy the parts here, you can use all our stuff. And, you know, we can walk you through it. And like I said earlier, I mean, even if you just buy, like, a muzzle brake and you want to throw it on, it's fine. Cool. So there's no extra charge for using the equipment. So I'll snap this guy on. Throw this barrel on. Now when you throw the barrel on, there's really only one way to put it on. You can kind of see the little guide pin there. You can see the cut in the upper receiver. So obviously that's going to go in right there. Some of these barrels, like this one, fits really nice. Some of them you got to, you know, maybe use a rubber mallet or something to kind of... Get them seated in there. Yeah. That's a great fit right there. Now we just need the barrel nut. Typically you want to throw your barrel nut on before you um, put your gas block on. So I'm going to throw a little anti-seize on the threads there. Maybe you can explain what that's all for. I know it's kind of self-explanatory in the name, but... Yeah, it's just so you... I mean, these barrels, there's a lot of heat going through them, a lot of vibration. Um, you're running them in the elements. And we just want to prevent, you know, let's say Colton puts 50,000 rounds through this barrel, and now he wants to go swap it out. We just want to, you know, protect the threads, make it easier for down the road when we try to pull this thing off. and prevent corrosion and all that so is there any kind of a special brand or type that you recommend um i used to just use like the aerospace stuff you can just buy the stuff at like your auto parts store and things like that oh. what about you is there anything special you use or no i just know that on the last video somebody was giving us grief about uh, the particular kind we used last time so of course anytime you do anything on the internet Get a lot of that, right? So there's there's nothing you can do. On they claim the, that it was going to corrode the whole thing and it was going to fall apart and fail and on the interweb that you're not going to get ridiculed on. Yep. And we I invite all those that ridicule ridicule rather to uh, go out and make their own videos. Yeah, that and you know, no, it's actually there's a lot of people who provide like good information, like comments. Oh, hey, maybe try this, and it's like, oh yeah, it's a good idea, you know. Yep. So I'll just I'll thread this on and thread it off a couple times just to kind of work that into the grooves and just get an even application of it. Now typically every barrel nut's gonna come with a set of instructions that kind of has the torque settings on it for you. It's anywhere between like 30 to like 70 pounds. Um, if you don't have instructions, if you go to like 45, 50 pounds, you should be plenty good. Should be good. So, now again, this is your standard barrel nut here. So this specific rail doesn't have any proprietary barrel nut to it. It just uses the standard AR-15 barrel nut. And you can see all the teeth on there. We got the teeth on here to match up with it. Now one thing when you're doing this, I always put one hand here to hold it in place. Because if you let this go and now you're just torquing up here, you can have this, you know, slip off, slip off you can round off some the end of the teeth them. on here or something. So
And also, um, when you're using a torque wrench like this, you want to line them up to get the, the most accurate reading. You want them vertical to each other. So if I'm putting this in like at a 90, because I can do either way. Um, it's not going to give you a good reading. Yeah, you might not get as, as accurate of a reading. Or about 55 right there. Now the thing with these is we may have to, yep, we'll have to go a little more because you can see here we're gonna have a gas tube that goes in there and if the teeth aren't lining up we got one right dead center so the gas tube's not gonna go in there. So we have to torque it down just a little bit more to get clearance to go through. Yep. Okay. So we the rifle and gas system because it's a long barrel on this thing, but uh, any recommendations or anything when it comes to what length system to run and piston versus gas? I'm, I'm a, I like gas myself, to be honest with you. Um, you know, people like the piston. The piston became popular just because it keeps the upper chamber, the upper receiver a lot cleaner, right? Mm -hmm. You're not getting the gases back into here. So basically the difference is instead of gas traveling all the way down this tube on a gas system where it comes down and you know pushes on the on the bolt so it goes like this well, except it goes like this right so gas goes in sends a bolt back and then the you know silent capture spring will send it back forward on a piston system there's going to be a rod here so the gas is just coming up here and then that rod is doing that work mm -hmm. right so it's keeping it a lot cleaner if you keep a clean gun, it doesn't make a difference, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, on a piston gun, you can turn up the gas, you can get more rounds through it, but, you know, in a civilian type environment where it's like, hey, you're going to the range, come back and clean your gun, you're never going to need to switch that gas on or off. Gotcha. Gas systems run suppressors better, in my opinion. Um, so I've considered going to a piston on mine just because it... A couple hundred rounds, it gets so stinking dirty, even though I've turned the gas all the way down as low as it'll go and still cycle, it still gets so stinking dirty. But it could be the powder I'm using, too. I'm mean, running TAC, which is maybe not the cleanest one out there, but yeah. it's just curious. And you're running a suppressor on yours? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and there's a ton of, I mean, you're, you're doubling the amount of carbon entering that, you know, with all that blowback on the suppressor. I think, too, running everything match grade, tight tolerances, it probably seizes up a little bit sooner than a looser setup would. Yeah. So next thing we're, we're going to do is throw this uh, gas tube on the gas block. And again, you want the Seekins adjustable here. And so you can see, you just want to make sure you guys do this right. There's the hole here, right? This is where the gas is going to come up. Enter this and then there's the hole in the gas tube. So you just want to make sure that hole is lined up with the one in the gas block. And then we're going to throw a roll pin in there. There's only one way this can go in. And also you can see the curve in here. And that's to kind of clear you know, the barrel and the barrel nut and enter inside the upper receiver. Gotcha. So the way I do this is I'll actually throw this barrel nut on, or sorry, this uh, gas block on. A little set screw in there. Yeah, there's two, which we'll tighten up. I'll tighten this under the barrel. And then just to make sure this hole is lined up, I'll throw an Allen wrench and just kind of wiggle it around just to make sure that gotcha. you know there's not any offset in there. And then there's a tiny little roll pin which we're gonna have to put in. This guy right here. And it comes with the gas block? It typically comes with the gas tube. Okay. So I think some gas blocks come with them. 
Now, I use this little tool here. Sometimes if you're beating on the actual roll pin, you can kind of deform it and then it makes it harder to get in. Mm -hmm. And then you just want a little ball pin hammer, you know. Don't need to be sledgehammering this thing or anything. Throw it in. Get a couple of light taps. So now that we got it set, I'll get a, an actual punch. this gas block on and then flip it around. Moment the truth. Does it line up? Just like that. So now on this, I mean some people make like little tape marks on here, things like that. But you gotta make sure this is lined up because the hole in here is gonna line up with the hole in there and that's how the whole gas system operates. If you're off kilter with something like this, your guns are not gonna shoot. Yep. Like you said, it'll shoot once and then it won't cycle. So, you just gotta make sure you're straight here in the whole tube. The cool thing about this barrel actually has like a little, and it's show up, but it's got a little dimple yep. where the set screw goes. So I've seen that on there. You kind of know if you're in place or not. Kind of centers itself. Yeah. As long so as you get it close. It's actually going to seat all, you know, further in than the other one. So gas tubes on. Now we throw the rail guy on. I noticed Troy has that little hook on the end of it that kind of sits right up against the upper. Now to line the rail up, there's a couple things we can do. We can get like a, like a Neotech or something like that that will just mount between the two and kind of hold it in place. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, you can do the caveman eyeball trick, which is my preferred method. So on the alpha rail, before we throw it on there, they've got a couple little components that need to be screwed in on the inside. And just little clamps. So there's some grooves in there where they kind of will seat themselves. Every rail is different. All right, so we put in the little, uh, what do we call those things? Clamps on the inside? Clamps, yeah. Because you keep them loose, right? Just put, the, there's three of them on there. Yep. Goes on the barrel nut. Hey, we, we gotta give Colton credit. I mean, he figured this thing out. So every, every rail you're gonna get is gonna be a little bit different. Different barrel nuts, different torque settings, different mounting um, brackets and things of that sort. Some are easier than others, some are harder than others, but once you figure them out, they're, you know, none of them are too bad at all, so. So we just laid it on over the barrel nut. Obviously we torqued that down, so now all we gotta do is just tighten up the, uh, the set screws here, and that's gonna clamp down under the barrel nut. I'm just kinda making sure this rail is lined up with the upper, and we want it. It's kinda like a tire, we just kinda do a little bit at a time. And then you just you can look down to make sure your barrel's still sitting center in the rail. That'll be looking cool. Looking good. 
The ever important crown. Very nice. So muzzle brake next, so we're going to throw a crush washer on here. Um, crush washer is kind of the cheating way to throw on a muzzle brake. If you're not running a suppressor, not a big deal. If you're running a suppressor, you're probably going to want to run shims on there instead. This is, uh, you know, you can see the, uh, the muzzle and the barrel kind of got that matching tone to it, which is nice. So on this one, you want the uh, the logo here facing up. We have most of the pressure kind of coming up. Um, you don't want this facing down because then it's going to just create more muzzle more rise muzzle for you. Rise, yeah. So this kind of helps you equalize it. That's the point of the muzzle brake. So which means we're going to have to go almost a full 180 degrees. Go talk him into getting a can. As soon as uh, you get that truss set up for me. There you go. We do them for 50 bucks. There you go. Take a look at that. Cool. Let me know what you think. Is that what's level to you? This guy out. So your charging handle, you can see you got the little dimple sticking out here. There's only one way this can go in. You know, it's not going to go in directly from the back there. It doesn't go in here. So you just got to set it on here. And you can see where there's little grooves cut out. That's where those dimples just fall into. And then it'll slide into the rails. So just put that in just about right there. Grab your bolt. Now your uh, bullet's got to be out. It, if it's in like that, it's not going to go in because the little cam is going to hit the side of the upper right there. So you got to kick it out so it's out like that. Throw the gas tube right there in the charging handle. And they will just slide in together like so. That's it. Now we'll just snap the two together and get yourself a rifle. There you go, man. He can pull it now. He can dry fire, right? Yeah, you can pull the trigger now. Just make sure you got it off safe. Try that thing back. Feel how smooth that sound capsule spring is. So that's a dry gun. You you're gonna want to oil it and everything, but if you didn't have that buffer in there, it would be called. <laughs> well, that's a nice trigger, man. Turn out nice. I gotta go Instead shoot it. Taking it on its maiden voyage, man. Yes, sir. Like it. Very good. So one of my favorite things about these uh, alpha rails are these sweet squid grips that you can get. It makes it for a really comfortable setup. So they come in these little feels like this, and then I don't know, Colton, where you want these. You can certainly 
lose them when you get to that point, but he's <laughs> all right, so Neil, we got her all built, man. Did an amazing job. Really appreciate you letting us come down and, and do the build. I think Colton's pretty uh, excited. Just needs to go shoot that sucker now. So uh, if you get a chance, come down to Ready Gunner down here in Provo, and then the new shop will be up in uh, Orem, right? In Orem, probably around August time frame, yeah. August so, 2016. Yeah. Awesome. So thank yeah. you so much again for all the help, man, the tools, staying late here with us, and. Uh, Really appreciate everything, man. No worries. Thanks for coming down. It's always good to see a table of parts turn into something like this. So it's like it's rewarding. It's cool. Yeah, it's just <laughs> so much fun. It's just satisfying to do it yourself. So yeah, pretty cool. All right. All right. Well, thanks, brother. Appreciate yeah, it. Thanks for coming down. Dead air armament. Oh, yeah. All right, I'm Kelly McMillan. Red Shot Show 2016. We're gonna give it a shot right now. 